Hello, beautiful internet people, and welcome to a three minute ish, maybe less talk on Chat GPT GPT 3 from OpenAI. As we kick this off here, and we're going to have some wild and crazy thoughts and things and ideas to talk about, please share some comments. Tell me your own thoughts on this. Tell me the own things that you've tried out. And what are your wild and crazy future ideas with Chat GPT? So I spent. I don't know, four or five days now playing with ChatGPT and seeing can, what it can do. And there's a lot of conjecture on the internet right now that it's going to replace coders, it's going to replace writers, it's going to you know change all these sorts of things. And ChatGPT is absolutely impressive. But from what I've seen, there's a few gaps and there's some limitations. But I do think there is a place for it in people's lives and developers' lives. Now, what I've seen, what I've been doing is I tested it against narratives. I asked it to write short stories for me. I tested it against having it explain technical topics for me. I tested it against writing code for data science and Python, some specific things, tested it against TensorFlow. And what I've seen is there's a pretty consistent theme, both in the coding of it and in the writing side of it. What I've noticed is it is really good at writing syntactically and grammatically accurate narratives and code, but they kind of cap out at a basic level. In the short stories that I had it write, for instance, and I think it's important to look at this in terms of short stories because I think it affects the coding as well. We can kind of draw parallels between them. In the short stories that I had it write, it was what I would say is about a freshman or a sophomore high school level of writing, very accurate much more grammatically correct probably than most freshmen's, but the the depth of creativity in the stories was not really there. There are very simple narrative arcs. There was uh, a very repeated, repeated theme in it. In the coding examples, I saw the same thing. The basic coding examples were super accurate, probably cleaner than a lot of the code that I would write, but they didn't have depth or creativity to them in the ways that we we, ex we expect senior software developers, senior data scientists to perform and behave. The, the coding examples that I tried to do with it were like uh, some basic object recognition with bounding boxes. And it did the object recognition, but not the bounding box. And then it spit out a little thing at the bottom that said, hey, to do the bounding boxes, just go use the TensorFlow API. The There was some cases where I asked it to like do some data wrangling, data cleanup, and you know uh, solve for extracting XML objects at, that were buried inside JSON objects, something I actually had to do at work not too long ago. And it was able to do it and it extracted the XML, but it didn't convert them to, to JSON to make it a unified object. It just pulled them out into a different you know, string and, and not an object. The the thing that I've noticed is it's really good at doing these really simple repeated tasks and it's really it can it can change the way that we interact with coding. So you know people are asking the question, hey is this going to replace developers? I don't think so. What I do think, and this is the prediction, you've heard it here, maybe here first, I don't know. I haven't seen anyone else make this prediction. I think it's going to replace the way that people interact with Stack Overflow. And I think for like some of the other things, it's going to be more like writing prompts. It's not going to replace your coding, but it's going to give you the start of your coding. It's going to give you a base structure that you're then going to be able to apply creativity in. So it won't replace coders, but I think it's going to make us a lot faster. And I think that the way we do research, the way that we learn new topics, and the way that we learn coding techniques is going to start to change because we could ask questions of chat GPT that we would previously have asked of Stack Overflow and get answers quicker and cleaner that are, are more usable and come with really clean documentation as opposed to having to go through four or five different responses or 10 or 12 different posts to find you know the one little piece of code that works. The thing that I've really uh, kind of that we need to be aware of with ChatGPT is it's a signal amplifier in this regard. So it's learned by what's out there. And if you ask it to tell you about something, it's going to tell you about the 80% about what the strongest signal is. And so I think there's probably a problem that may come out with this that it's going to, to answer based off of what it's seen the most of 
people are then going to reuse what it's seen the most of, and it may actually stifle its learning and its creativity because it'll be a self-referential signal amplifier because people will go to chat GPT to ask a question, they'll then reuse what they got in that question and then that loop will continue to stay where it is. So it's gonna be something interesting. And, and as we level up our code and as we think through these sorts of things, we're gonna to have to ask ourselves, is this the most creative way to do this or is it just the most common way to do this? So there's probably a really fun question that can be asked as well of, what if let's say you're a contractor coding for someone that's written you to write that code and then you use GPT to create the scaffolding for your code and then you sell that to a client or, or you deliver it to a client for payment. Do you owe money back to OpenAI ChatGPT? Where's the ethical and legal lines around that? That's gonna be a really fun thing to explore. You know, or is it, you know, if it gives you the framework, it's just like using it out of a book and you use that to then write something original how much do you have to change before it's your original work and you can kind of feel good about it. It's gonna be a really fun thing to play with down in the future. But we could also think about it as whenever we're using the Picasso method. Picasso said uh, uh, amateur artist copy great artists, steal it directly or something like that. Um, uh, all art is stealing and being derivative and those sorts of things. And so if we're applying the Picasso method and we're using their code, to inform our own code and then deliver it. Isn't that just you know what we already do anyways? So there's another really good question is, if you use ChatGPT to baseline your code, should you put a comment in your code attributing that in the code? Do you, does ChatGPT require attribution? I haven't looked, probably check that out. So I didn't show you any code examples because that would be super boring and you can just do that yourself. But I hope I've given you some things to think about and some possible nuggets to maybe work into your workflow or try things out. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We have a few others for you as well. Please smash that like button, subscribe button, do all those crazy things that creators love and you know, go build something.